Hey there, Jen here. And if you'll remember back over a year ago, I think it was maybe just about a year ago, Jordan and I were reporting on the Mountain Valley Pipeline and the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. So today I thought I'd do an update because there are some things happening there. There are more stories out there where Dominion Energy is taking people's land through eminent domain. So they're seizing people's land legally farms, people's homes that has been in their family for 400 years, things like that. They're able to just take the land, shove these pipelines through, and everyone apparently is okay with it. Except there are some true fighters out there, some protesters who are protecting the land, who are protecting people's property, and trying to fight against these pipelines going through everywhere because of Dominion Energy in Virginia. So let's go ahead and go to Michael Sonato's latest piece in The Guardian about what is happening to some farmers. And let's see here. How eminent domain is blighting farmers in the path of gas pipeline. Compulsory purchase or the threat of it of property on the route of a pipeline for fracked natural gas has left a slew of grievances and lawsuits in West Virginia and Virginia. In July 2015, Neil Lafiere and his wife Beth purchased a home in Summers County, West Virginia. The first time they visited the property after purchasing it, they found stakes outlining what they would later find out to be the route for a gas pipeline. About two years later, representatives for the Mountain Valley Pipeline approached the Lafayette family over the land rights to their property. The land agent was saying if we didn't come to the table, they would just take it via eminent domain, Lafayette told the Guardian. Under eminent domain, private property is seized from owners for public use. But for many landowners along the Mountain Valley Pipeline route, like the Lafayettes, the forced loss of something of their land was not the end of their woes. Many suffered damages to the rest of their property after agreeing to land easements or fighting the pipeline's invocation of the eminent domain law. Once completed, the Mountain Valley Pipeline will transport up to two, I'm sorry, I don't know what BN is, two BN cubic feet of, I, a billion, let's say billion, <laughs> that makes sense, two billion cubic feet of fracked natural gas daily from the Marcellus and Utica shale basins along a 303 mile route from northwestern West Virginia to southern Virginia with a proposed 73 mile extension into North Carolina. The 4.6 billion project is estimated to be completed in mid-2020, more than one billion in over $1 billion in over a year past the project's initial estimated cost and completion date after protests, lawsuits, and environmental violations have caused numerous delays. With few alternative options in the face of eminent domain and concerned that his farm would be in jeopardy of being ineligible for organic certification, Lafayette signed a land easement for the pipeline route through their property. So you can see that what's going on here is that because of profits, People are having to sign these deals to allow the pipeline to go through their property or even sell their property outright, outright, sell parts of their property, whatever it is. It's an individual case basis and it's absolutely terrible because it impacts not just the parts of the land that the pipeline, that Mountain Valley Pipeline have been able to um, purchase, but it affects the rest of the land too especially for farmers and people who need the rest of their land uh, for certain things, such as this organic farmer that I'm about to read about. On September 7th, 2018, Lafayette was out on his farm harvesting ginseng and planting seeds with two of his children when they noticed a helicopter flying low over the property. A few seconds later, we started getting pelted by these little blue pellets. Two of my children sustained lacerations to the face, he said. Ten days later, an agent with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and two representatives from the Mountain Valley Pipeline met with Lafayette. He was informed the pellets were a product called EarthGuard Edge, meant for erosion control, and there was nothing to be done to clean up the product on the farm for which he had only recently obtained organic certification. And then 
I'll skip it ahead a little bit. The land agent said that they were sorry and it wouldn't happen again. Of course, it happened again. Here's another story. In Rocky Mount, Virginia, part of Dave and Betty Werner's property was taken via eminent domain for the pipeline route. Again, the pipeline route for profits, and it's devastating to the environment as well. So you got a double hit there. Uh, it has devastated their farm. On the Warner's 58-acre farm, their best pasture, which where they raised cows, chickens, pigs, and turkeys, was seized for the pipeline. As a result of the Mountain Valley Pipeline taking over that lower pasture, it put us out of business. We can't live and operate without that pasture and the water sources down there. Absolutely terrible. And the Warners have taken this to court. The Warners trial for just compensation for Mountain Valley Pipeline for their property is scheduled to start next year. This is not the first time the issue has gone to court. The dispute over the use of eminent domain for, fract for a fracked gas pipeline incited a federal lawsuit filed by landowners in Virginia and West Virginia. But a federal appeals court dismissed the case in February 2019 after the U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear it. So these are people who are fighting for the environment, fighting for their property, fighting for their rights. They already see the environmental devastation. The U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear the case. And in February, it was dropped. Bye-bye. You know, never mind. We're not going to hear your case. It's absolutely terrible because these people have no recourse, it seems. There's nothing that they can do except for protest. And you'll see it later that Trump is trying to criminalize these protests, is really trying to make sure that these companies like Dominion Energy can come in and do whatever they want to do. Another um, person named Becky Crab, she was Crabtree of Lynnside, West Virginia, was one of the plaintiffs in the lawsuit whose property was also taken by the pipeline. MVP had installed the pipeline across our land without paying us a dime, and you'll hear that over and over again. In Summers County, West Virginia, the 90.5 acres of Mark Gerald's property is nearly split in half by 3,020 feet of the pipeline's route. He settled with MVP to grant a land easement after he felt he had no other viable options. Your plans, hopes, dreams for your property you worked for your whole life. All those things are gone now, said Gerald. EQM Midstream Partners, the operator and majority owner of the Mountain Valley Pipeline, did not respond to re multiple requests for comment. You have to feel sorry for these people. And just like the people that Jordan interviewed when we were in Virginia and West Virginia, it hurts their hearts. We interviewed Red Terry and Minor Terry who had sat in their in trees on their land that the Mountain Valley Pipeline was supposed to go straight through for 30 days. They lived in these trees on their own land trying to save uh, this land that had been in their family. I think it was granted by the Queen of England or something to their family. And for f they've owned it for 400 years. And now this pipeline company is allowed to go right through it. Actually, we should do a follow-up with Red and Minor Terry to see how things are going now. Because as I said at the top, this was quite a while ago. And it's still going on. People are still being affected. This is ruining lives, ruining land, ruining businesses. You know, Trump talks about being all good for business, but he's ruining businesses because this pipeline is allowed to go right through the land that is necessary for these businesses and farms to operate. Let's go ahead and see what, what, uh, what else we have going on here. So this is in the Roanoke Times. And Mountain Valley Pipeline urges judge to remove tree sitters. So I talked about Red and Minor Terry, who were tree, tree sit protesters, and there are other tree sit protests going on as well. So this caption of this picture says, Sub since September, so this article is written in May of this year, so since September of 2018, protesters have occupied two trees in the path of the Mountain Valley Pipeline near Elliston in Montgomery County. The company has asked a federal judge to grant their request for a preliminary injunction against the tree sitters, which would allow their rem removal, but the judge has not acted yet. 
After staying up in the trees for nearly nine months, blockers of the Mountain Valley Pipeline are facing an attempt to bring them down. Lawyers for the company said in a recent court filing that it needs to have two tree sitters removed by Friday so workers can cl finish clearing a path for the massive natural gas pipeline. On September 5, 2018, two protesters took up residence in a white pine and chestnut oak that stand in a construction easement for the pipeline in eastern Montgomery County. While the tree stands have switched occupants a number of times, they remained standing. So you'll see that this is often a show of solidarity. People will take turns in the trees. People, you know, once uh, one protest has reached its end, another one will start up. So people are kind of like tag teaming each other to make sure that this doesn't happen. They're trying their very best to make sure that the Mountain Valley Pipeline does not go through. In December, lawyers from Mountain Valley asked federal judge Elizabeth Dillon to issue a preliminary injunction against the tree sitters, which would allow their removal by U.S. Marshals. Um, Mountain Valley said in mid-May it would like to have the tree sitters removed by the end of the month in order to avoid additional costs. Kleinfelter said later in the month, Mountain Valley would have a crew of tree cutters near the protest off Yellow Finch Lane in the Elliston area. And if you Google the Yellow Finch uh, tree sitters, you'll see lots of pictures, lots of stories um, on Facebook and Twitter. So if you're interested in the Yellow Finch tree sitters, definitely look them up. They are heroes. The company asked that the two occupied trees be cleared of protesters so that they could then be timbered from an efficiency standpoint. If Mountain Valley is forced to wait, it would cost an additional $22,000. In a post to its Facebook page Wednesday, Appalachians Against Pipelines, and I highly recommend you check out that page to continue following this story as well, that's Appalachians Against Pipelines, have been protecting the hillside in the path of their pipeline for 267 days. The group urged supporters to visit the protest. Everyone on site is safer when there are more people there, it said. Since work on the 303-mile buried pipeline began last year, more than two dozen demonstrators have sat in trees or chained themselves to construction equipment along its route through West Virginia and Southwest Virginia. With the exception of the yellow finch tree sitters, all of them have come down voluntarily or been removed by police. So this is kind of the last stand, although um, I actually need to follow up on what's happened with the yellow finch tree sitters. I don't think that protesters are going to stop. A Mountain Valley spokeswoman has blamed obstructionists for trying to delay work when it has received all the state and federal permits needed to complete a project that will deliver needed gas to the mid-Atlantic and southeastern regions of the country. But two key sets of permits, one for the pipeline to cross more than 1,000 streams and wetlands, and the other for it to pass through the Jefferson National Forest have been suspended due to legal challenges. So people are still fighting. Critics say the work is, excuse me, <clears throat> contaminating nearby streams. In December, the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality filed a lawsuit that accused Mountain Valley of violating erosion and sediment control measures more than 300 times. The case is still pending. Located on a steep slope not far from where the pipeline will cross the Roanoke River, the Yellow Finch tree sit has played out more quietly than other demonstrations. Two protesters are camped out in tree stands about 50 feet above the ground, while supporters on the ground send up food, water, water and other supplies in plastic buckets suspended by ropes. The current tree sitters are maintaining their anonymity. Others have shared their names and stories, including a recent Virginia Tech graduate, a 69-year-old grandfather and rock climber from Albemarle County, and a working-class mother. Early Wednesday morning, a Mountain Valley crew showed up at the site. One of the workers claimed he was assaulted by the protesters. Yeah, I find that doubtful. Um, and deputies and Virginia police troopers were called to the scene. So... That, again, was written at the end of May, and you can go to the Appalachians Against Pipelines Facebook page to follow up on current um, protests. It's really interesting because 
you have to to wonder when these people these workers these mountain valley pipeline people are trying to shove this pipeline through they have to see the damage that they're doing you would think that it would come into their head hmm this is damaging the environment this is stealing property through eminent domain this isn't a good thing and I know people need jobs and all of that but you would think that morally the workers of the Mountain Valley Pipeline and I don't want to blame the workers they're cogs in the machine but you have to wonder what they're thinking anyway at the very least are they thinking about the damage that this is doing are they thinking about the people whose lives and and livelihoods this is affecting I just wonder about that. Obviously, the true culprits are the, the wealthy people with deep pockets who um, at Dominion Energy and the people in the government who are also going to benefit from the Mountain Valley Pipeline. They don't care about the little people. They don't care about the workers. Um, so again, I don't mean to um, totally slam the workers, but you have to wonder what they're thinking because they're the ones who are physically shoving this pipeline through people's property. All right, let's go ahead and see what Mr. Trump has to say about all this. Trump administration seeks criminal crackdown on pipeline protests. And this is in Politico on the 3rd of this month. The Trump administration is joining calls to treat some pipeline protests as a federal crime, mirroring state legislative efforts that have spread in the wake of high profile demonstrations around the country. The Transportation Department's Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration released a proposal Monday calling for Congress to expand a law that threatens fines and up to 20 years prison time for damaging or destroying pipelines currently in operation. This makes me so incredibly angry. They are literally putting the rights of pipelines ahead of the rights of people and the right to protest. In our country, you're allowed to protest. Uh, pipelines don't have rights. People have rights. It's disgusting. Uh, let's see, where did I end off here? 20 years prison time for damaging or destroying pipelines currently in operation. The expanded version would add vandalism, tampering with, or impeding, disrupting, or inhibiting the operation of either existing pipelines or those under construction. Again, putting the rights of pipelines ahead of the rights of people. I'm really fired up about this. While House Democrats will almost certainly block the proposal, it intensifies fights already underway in several energy producing states to tamp down the waves of pipeline protests launched by progressive environmental advocates around the country as they seek to stop production of fossil fuels. PHMSA insists it doesn't want to inhibit legitimate protests, but free speech advocates worry that efforts to impose massive fines and years in prison for impeding pipeline construction could also infringe on activists' First Amendment rights. The proposed penalty is far and away more extreme than what we've seen at the state level, said Ellie Page, an attorney for International Center for Not-for-Profit Law, a nonprofit group that has tracked anti-protest bills through state legislatures. When you combine provisions that vague to penalties that extreme, that creates uncertainty about what is and isn't legal. PHMSA included the proposal, which appears similar to model legislation that conservative American Legislative Exchange Council created, oh, imagine that, in a longer list of changes the department would like to see in pipeline safety standards that Congress is set to reauthorize. A spokesperson for Energy and Commerce Chairman Frank Pallone said that he has no intention of allowing a pipeline safety bill to be used as a vehicle for stifling legitimate dissent and protest, and is concerned that is what the proposal would do. This provision will not make it past the committee, but Chairman Pallone remains hopeful that we can find common ground on other issues, the spokesperson said. A PHMSA spokesperson said the agency's goal is to deter individuals from activities that can cause serious harm, such as attempting to tamper with valves on existing pipelines. This proposal is not meant in any way to inhibit lawful protesters from exercising their First Amendment rights, and PHMSA is committed to working with Congress to make sure that this is clear in any final legislation. Yeah, right. If you believe that this isn't meant to deter legitimate protests, 
I have news for you. It is absolutely meant to deter legitimate protests. The fines and penalties that they are trying to, to toss out there are absurdly extreme. Of course it's going to deter legitimate protests. And for those who follow through on protests anyway, the penalties that they will receive definitely stifle their First Amendment rights. People will still protest. People care about the environment and other people that much. And that's what the administration doesn't understand. Environmental groups, American Indian tribes, local landowners, and other pipeline opponents have fought projects around the country with tactics, including the months-long demonstration at a months-long multiple months demonstration at a campsite erected along the path of the Dakota Access Pipeline, as well as activists who have spent months living in trees in Virginia in an effort to block construction of the Mountain Valley Pipeline. The provision is a clear infringement on the basic right of speech and assembly and a poorly veiled effort to under undermine the ability of Native and Indigenous communities to advocate for themselves and their tribal lands, said Senator Ed Markey in a statement. The American Gas and American Petroleum Institute said they backed the overall package of proposals PHMSA offered, but declined to comment on the specific proposal to meet out prison sentences for impeding instruction. Trade Association Interstate Nation Natural Gas Association of America did not directly address the administration's proposed changes, but said it supported efforts to protect infrastructure. Generally speaking, INGAA is in favor of laws that serve to deter pipeline vandalism, a spokesperson for the group said. Tampering with or vandalizing critical infrastructure can create serious safety risks to the public, pipeline employees, and the perpetrators. These acts of vandalism could also have devastating environmental impacts. Yeah, right, like they care about devastating environmental impacts. Environmental groups criticized PHMSA's suggestion, saying it would bring partisan politics to an agency in charge of technical pipeline safety regulations. We are outraged and appalled at the U.S. Department of Transportation proposal to further target and criminalize communities who are exercising their lawful right to protest and demanding a halt to environmental extraction, said Tamara Tolles O'Laughlin, North American Director for the Climate Activist Group 350.org, which has protested pipeline development. Let's see here. Skip ahead some. Some of these regulatory proposals certainly appear to be less about actually protecting pipeline operations and more about intimidating anyone who opposes pipeline projects, said Elizabeth Klein, Deputy Director at New York University School of Law's State Energy and Environmental Impact Center. Civil rights groups have already challenged some of the recent state laws. The American Civil Liberties Union filed a suit in South Dakota over the state's recently enacted Riot Boosting Act, legislation that would make it a crime to take part or help organize protests. The Center for Constitutional Rights also sued Louisiana earlier this month over a law that state passed late last year that would allow it to sentence protesters near any of the state's 125,000 miles of pipeline up to five years in prison with hard labor. So the pipeline protesters are not only in a fight to protect their land, they're also in a fight to protect future protesters and current protesters from these crazy, crazy proposed laws and current laws that work to tamp down on protests and organizing protests. And we really have to pressure our congressmen and women to um, not allow these draconian laws. Uh, protest is what our country is founded on and based on, and we're allowed to protest. We're allowed to protect the rights of people and the environment. And um, kudos to the pipeline protesters who have protested, who will protest, who are currently protesting, and definitely check out the Yellow Finch Tree Sit protests. Um, and, you know, see what you can do uh, by calling your legislators and um, 
fighting against these laws. I mean, what else is there to say except you have to feel for the people whose lives and livelihoods are being destroyed. You have to feel excited and happy about the protesters who are fighting so strongly for the rights of people and the environment. And you have to feel so sick to your stomach about the criminalization of such protests. All right, like this video and become a member so that we can go back to Virginia and West Virginia to cover the Mountain Valley Pipeline protests again. Uh, we were able to do it the first time with your help, so please help us do it again. Go to statuscoup.com slash join. I promise you'll love being a member. There are lots and lots of great perks, including behind the scenes video diaries where we kind of just sit and chat to you, the people, and talk about what's going on in our minds, our struggles, our triumphs, things like that. Again, go to statuscoup.com slash join. You can get all of that. And every single member helps us get out in the field to cover things like the Mountain Valley Pipeline protests. Okay, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.